I see how kind of all this stuff, even from like the initial move is intertwined. So um, I teach within like the initial move to essentially like get moving towards your desired target. I teach forward momentum in the initial move, okay? If we drew a line, you know, starting at your, your, your front hip, right? That line doesn't necessarily get crossed until your descending move from peak leg lift, okay? Now, that in and of itself is not bad. Obviously, there's this perception of power thing that we, we deal with in terms of like, oh, I feel powerful on my back leg. I feel powerful like I'm putting a lot of force into the ground. That's all great. Um, I don't want to like drastically change that, but what happens as a byproduct, in my opinion, of this kind of move, even though your drive leg mechanics are absolutely superb, good front side, really good trunk rotation or trunk counter rotation move here upon separation. Um, but now as you get coming down into your drive phase and approaching front foot strike, we can see like a, a, a kind of, a really good picture of you know kind of where we want to be and where we are so the biggest thing that jumps out to me i'll just rattle these off is one uh you're not creating a whole lot of segmentation you said it in the report hip shoulder separation right so for me segmentation is segmenting the two rotations of like lower body upper body ideally just to give you context we want to rotate the lower body before we rotate the upper body we want to delay rotation of the upper body essentially uh, keep neutral trunk and then while our hips rotate that's going to create separation um, so it's a segmenting of two rotations so what i see is that you're not creating a whole lot of segmentation because your your hips are a little late to rotate and that's what goes back to that like idea that i had uh pertaining to the forward momentum in the initial move like your body or your brain adjusts to the input of like the initial move tempo okay so if the tempo is slow i fear that a lot of times you know our body is going to be a little bit slower and late to rotate so that's what i'm seeing here late hip rotation is going to influence um you not being able to clear your hips so you can see as you come down a front foot strike boom and now as your hips go to complete rotation, your front knee kind of gets bowed outward, right? And now that's going to affect your lead leg block and the energy that's coming up the chain. And then that's also going to affect um, a couple different things like you wrote in, in, the, in your PDF, the trail leg hip flexion. Although that is kind of more of a stability thing, I do believe that there is, uh, there is this dynamic with trail leg hip flexion that if you don't put your pelvis or your, your hips, let's say your hips rotated, you don't put those in the, in the most optimal position as soon as your front foot anchors into the ground, that's going to influence your, your, your trail leg hip flexion as well. Okay, so ideally we would want to anchor down with our hips already into rotation, right? Not fully rotated, but already into hip rotation. So then we can clear our hips. So then when our hips complete rotation and pulls the trunk through, our, our pelvis can rotate over our femur of our lead leg and that's gonna influence the knee to extend and that's our lead leg block. So all these things are intertwined, right? Which is the so cool about pitching mechanics. So um, let's go ahead and give you these, these breakdowns too. So Dylan sees from the back, you can just see from from his initial move uh, in terms of his forward momentum down the slope, lifts, and he's already getting going. Now, you're gonna see kind of a counter move as well with his trunk, right? So like his lower half is initiating that forward momentum, but his trunk's gonna get into his counter rotation to feel his load of his drive leg, right? Um, and then that's gonna influence that segmentation, right? So you can see as he anchors down, you know, his, you can see from the back foot that his, his hips rotated and his trunk is neutral and then puts his hips into a really optimal position upon landing that now as he, you know, completes his hip rotation, pulls the trunk into rotation, pulls the arm through trunk flexion, and then boom, you have knee extension of the lead leg as a byproduct, right, of the positioning and then trail leg stays into extension. Okay. And you also see this late launch what I call late launch is you getting a, you know, shoulder extension and releasing over your front leg. Whereas you, again, not clearing the hips, uh, affects the lead leg block, trail leg flexion. And now when you release the ball, you know, your chest is behind your lead knee and we want to maximize extension. We want to get, you know, as much extension as possible. All right, dudes, Robbie Rowe here. Thank you for watching that video. If you're interested in booking your own mechanical analysis, you can click that link right there. Also tell you a little bit about the service and what it entails. Hit that link right there. 
subscribe, please. You can also check out that video right there, which is related to the video that you just watched if you want to get some more context on that. All right, guys. Much love. God bless. Till next time. See ya. Strike three. You're out.